In this small town, very small town, is the remnants of a very nice Reglebaut. And it is built right next to a very nice hotel. Near the small village in France of Magival, 10 kilometers northeast of Sassons, you may begin to find bunkers, a lot of them actually, before you get to the first gate. And from there on, it just grows so much bigger. Now, as you can clearly tell, I am within a fence. Within a fence. And as you can clearly tell, here's the guardhouse. And here's a camp. Or at least the beginning of it. And of course, being next to a railway, you're starting to get the idea. It's probably German. That's probably World War II. If you look closely at all these security zones, the first gate being up here, to a village on the other side of here. Now, some of this is a little deceiving because afterwards NATO took over this site for some years, as did the French military. But this was Hitler's headquarters, built in 1942, of course abandoned sometime after the D-Day landings in 44. And he was here, at least once that they know of. Spunker is here. Over 900 buildings were built here. And there's a wonderful little association that what they did when the French military gave up this site, they bought all the land for themselves and their friends, and they made sure it was kept safe. A lot of the 900 bunkers was destroyed, of course. Blown up, destroyed. Now, hiding on the ground, security fences and what have you. But what these guys did, that's kind of that's cool is they made a little museum with some very original pieces that you're really not going to find anywhere else there was ss units here as well every one of these buildings belongs to one of the communities around here this they're kept safe some of them we can get into some of them we can't uh, right now, it takes a little bit of planning, and some of them are hiding in large numbers outside in the forests. That takes time to find, and you spend a little while walking through here. But you recognize the bunkers, this one have a new roof. Well, at least just the plastic tarp for protection. This will be where they drive in, by the gatehouse. This site was about the same size as Wolf's Lair in Poland, which makes it very large. It was right next to a railway, and at the end of this, there's a railway tunnel where Hitler's train could have pulled into. Fortunately, I can't show you because it's still active and there are trains running through it all day. Um, there was armored doors at the end of the railway tunnel. They were removed after an accident, but you get the idea. On the one time Hitler was here, he didn't actually use the train. He took his car because by that time in 44, rail was just too dangerous. The construction of Wolfschluck II began in 1942 by organization Tod, overseen by Siegfried Schmelcher, whom we've heard of before. His report of fewer Hauptquartiers we have gone over while searching the Project Riese sites. And it is from that that we know what resources were used here. And at its peak, it took 13,000 workers and it took 18 months to complete. In the end, it covered an area of 90 square kilometers, almost 35 square miles. Hitler had 16 official Führerhauptquartier complexes with more under construction, but this is by far the largest and most impressive one, and it was exclusively used by the German Army High Command during the war. Here were 860 bunkers constructed and spread over the site. It's the most important of the locations was that the site was close to an 860 meter long railway tunnel. 
This site was originally reconnoitered already during the fighting of 1940, as it would shelter Hitler's train here, although the French had blown up the entrance. An interesting note is that during World War I, Hitler himself had actually fought here in the area. And here on top of the rail tunnel was Hitler's personal bunker, as well as the Army High Command bunker where the meeting with Hitler took place. There was also a tea house, which has since been destroyed. The complex was protected by 18 anti-aircraft installations, in addition with more 10 armored dome bunkers sporting heavy machine guns and other weaponry. In addition to bunkers, there were many office buildings, barracks, dining rooms for officers and soldiers. There was even swimming pools on the grounds and several auxiliary power bunkers. This was a logistical feat, as no local materials could be used for the huge complex. So everything had to be brought in. There was not even a phone central in this location. Power for the complex had come from the French civilian complex, but with backups locally. From Schmelzer's report, we can see that this was the second largest expenditure in resources after Project Lisa. And again, here I must ask, this was an enormous complex with 860 bunkers, and Lisa used far more resources than here, and there all we can see is some half-finished tunnels. In March 1944, all the villagers in the surrounding villages were evacuated and the German Wirtschaft Leitung took over the running of the farms so they would not fall into neglect. The complex was occupied and in use for only 10 days before it was abandoned as the 3rd Armored was approaching. The smaller AA guns were removed and the radio station was destroyed, otherwise the entire complex was left intact to the US troops. Those who occupied the site were amazed at how well this entire area had been camouflaged. Even the villagers in the surrounding villages had no idea of the extent of this site. Earlier, one French resistance group had reported the construction to the Allies, believing it might be a V-1 launch site. But during the then subsequent Allied overflights, they were unable to find the site from the air. The headquarters was lost to the Allies in August 1944, where after the end of the World War II, the military complex was used by both NATO and French army troops, which used it as a training grounds. This was the headquarters bunker for the German high command. It is indicative of how these bunkers was constructed, where first a very heavily reinforced central bunker was built, constructed deep into the ground, and then it was surrounded by a lesser reinforced office complex. This is most of the complex buildings were constructed in this way including Hitler's personal bunker. This is just exactly like it was at uh, Bolshansk in Poland. You had these large above ground buildings, part of which were reinforced, some of them weren't. And there are 900 buildings in this complex. And the interesting thing is, well, of course it's not You see the steel beams and the cement, and this is some heavy duty buildings. Parts of this building is reinforced more than others. This is actually officially the first one of these I have been in that has not been demolished. All the ones, all the buildings like these in Poland have been destroyed. So this one is actually the only one that's intact. And here, I can feel it's getting a little cold here. Here I am walking into a more a cold it's colder in here I mean, they have stuff put everywhere uh, the first things the locals here did after the french military gave up this site was they bought it they bought the site they bought the property they bought the ground 
which is perfect because now the military can't come and ask for it back. And then of course the scrappers tried to get in, which they always do, and they got some of it. So here we're going into a secure part. And you can start seeing here's uh, the first steel door with a slide. Not a whole lot of close defense. Because remember, we are already within a whole lot of rings of security and defense. When you come in here, second door, you'd be here. And of course, everything is under overpressure in here, in this part of the building. Everything can be closed off to overpressure. So you can vent out any combat gases that might come in here. And this was the secure part of this reinforced building because they added a couple of meters to the roof. So here we are under four meters of reinforced concrete. And you can feel it's a little colder in here than in the rest of the building because the rest of the building where the offices are was just, it was just normal temperature because you're practically outdoors. And here you have And you look at these rooms, and what's fascinating is that Hitler was here, apparently just for a few hours, in 1944. On the 16th of June, after D-Day, Hitler was apparently here. He came by car, not by train, for an unexpected visit. As the Americans and Allies moved closer to Paris, the French uh, general staff moved here for a few days, six, seven days, and then they continued on as it became clear that the invasion of Normandy had succeeded and the Americans were coming close to Paris. But in here, they would have the offices, communication, you had the ventilation. With no emergency exits, because you are technically above ground, but there's only one door. There's a door on the other end, leads to the bathroom. So in the, so in the secure facility, let's call it the German talk, shall we? <laughs> In the secure part of the German bunker, there's only one toilet. I hope they didn't have to drink too much coffee. I was lazy when I was in here. That's where the filter, air filtration room was. Actually, you can hear, actually, there's a, this is not by any means soundproof. This little, for sure, this little secure room here. Wooden doors. Of course, we can expect there are panels on the walls in here for more people. They have wooden floors, which is also absorb quite a bit of the, um, the echo. Oh, these are part of the, this is part of the ventilation, the original ventilation. Ah, see if it works. I know there's light in here, but that's not it. Lights, ventilation. Scrappers did get quite a bit of this stuff here. But what makes this place interesting, this was closed off, this doorway was closed off by NATO after the war. NATO took this place over, as they did with many places, well, not that far from Paris. And it 
is a nice, secure, above-ground bunker facility. Afterwards, the Americans, some six years after the war, the Americans stayed here for a year after the war, and then they left, and, and six years after that, they came back here and started school for nurses, drivers, and a junk school as well. NATO enlarged some of these rooms that were used, but with 900 buildings, I'm curious about how many of them have been blown up by whom? Because the forests are littered with coast defensive bunkers, of course, all the perimeters. NATO built quite a bit of stuff. But of the big bunkers like this one, I'm not entirely clear on how many there were. And here, throughout the complex, this was a very large complex, comparable to Poland. And they would use mnemonic tubes for communication, shooting messages around the complex. And here the pipes are still in place in the ground that runs under the building in utility tunnels. So a lot of times when we see these tunnels in something that will be a large complex, it is for these tubes for communication, which is also really interesting and something to know. Like what we see in Sussan big time. There's a communication bunker that was built in 1942 outside. It was initially going to be a Regelbau, but it was then turned into a communication bunker. Not a very large one, but we'll see that in a minute. Just these small rooms here on the sides. But they have a very interesting collection here with some things that you will not have seen anywhere else. You know, usually I'm not a museum fan, but this is on location, on the actual location where this happened in this Paris headquarters for Hitler. And here you have a dent in the wall. You have a little staircase in the middle. That was supposed to be shielding for blast. Venting a blast upwards and then hopefully not too far downwards into here. I'm not entirely sure how well this would work. This would have worked because to stand on the ground inside the bunker the secure area and see daylight and see the grass so if a bomb would have blown through here I don't think this staircase would have made much of a difference honestly but I mean obviously they had an idea with it and you see the roof arcs here as well <clears throat> never seen this before, this little arched, I don't even know what to call this feature, I really don't. Secure. This is the end of the secure area. Of course, before the museum took over, there were scrappers here, tried to burn the rubber off the cover wires. And when you come out here, where well, you're walking outside to around the hill is the communication bunker up there. 
And then in the forest surrounding us, there are a huge amount of bunkers that we are going to visit and take a look at. If we can, some of them are destroyed, some of them are not just available because they're just covered up, and some of them are on private property. And right next to the Army High Command Central Command Bunker was a small Regelbauten, standard build. In here was an auxiliary radio communication post with a raising up aerial and everything has been restored in here to the way it was at the time, where for backup communications, should any of the main phone lines or any other be disrupted, here communications to the front and hinterland could be successfully done and it has been beautifully restored and cared for. But as you look at the aerials here, imagine none of this would be seen from the air in 1944. Everything was perfectly camouflaged to a most impressive degree. So they planted some 30,000 mines around this headquarters as well, which by Polish standards I suppose is not really that many. But they worked for a year and a half clearing them, had German prisoners of war do it themselves. Well, the food is still on the table. Really? Yeah, they left their helmets, their gas masks, they just liked it. Makes it easier to make a museum. So are some of these the original things? This collection. We really started very young, at eight years old. Didn't we all? Oh, yes, yes. But yeah, that is heavy. Look. Are you it playing is. with the phones again? This is very heavy, yeah. Will you call the Führer and tell him to yeah, send us a coffee? Yeah, yeah, send us a proper telephone. The <laughs> telephones are too heavy. Our arms are wearing out. That is substantial. That is a serious phone. It yeah. is a very serious phone. This is a very serious phone. Well, I suppose, on peut l'utiliser comme arme. Surprised. <laughs> you know, we think they're plastic. <coughs> I actually thought it was bakelite. I, I, yeah, I always thought yeah. they did, yeah. Yeah, but if you dropped it, it would smash. <laughs> or at the resistance thought it might be oh. connected with the V1 and the V2 sites. So they had radioed the Americans to bomb it. There's also the emergency exit. Right? There's no emergency exit because they have two entrances. Well, there used to be an emergency exit in one of the rooms. Anyway, so the, the uh, room is the other room is the identical in here. Yeah, And these were army operators. Yes. Yes, so I did that. 
Yeah, yesterday they were explaining why it was called a diamond ditch, because that's puzzled me for decades. And when Vauban uh, built his bastions, they came out like that. And then the ditch went round the diamond shape. That's a little mystery. Même la porte. Est-ce que la serrure peut faire rentrer? Et pas de porte blindée pour les toilettes. Non. Ah, c'est à cause des girondelles. Ah, girondelles, j'essaie. From the West Wall. West Wall, c'est ça. Ah. Ah. Funk around the radio room. Oh yes. Pour la radio, c'est quoi? But she wanted a little quiet and space to yourself where you can have the, yeah. This will all be painted green, grass green. Waterworks. Right, they fill the water tanks. So the bunkers. So this was this was the pump station. Pumping station. Ground well. Yeah. That's still running, from what I can hear. Ah, that's the near to. Those are the jerks bits. You know, this was full of water, obviously. They just sat down there. When they left. Water poured up everywhere. The people taking care of this site today, one could say, have endeavored to make this the main attraction. In the outer offices of the Army High Command, they have built small museum setups where you can get a glimpse of the life and time of the soldiers that were stationed here, which is a really nice addition to the place. In the past, you yeah, the Second World War ones were in similar ways, right, right. but they closed up more than that to make take a right, yeah. yeah, the officers yeah. would come crying so here with a. So yeah, they cut their finger, they come running here. Of course. Yeah. For the nurse, the attention of the. Yeah, they, they, they found. Hitler did not yeah. allow women in. So the guy who saves Paris, <laughs> he gets involved in another attempt on Hitler's life. He's uh, condemned but saved by the Americans, <laughs> and he joins the Bundeswehr and he, and is and is sent here. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's, that's an interesting story. That is um, my girlfriend's. You really don't see that a lot. 1943. That's a very nice collection they have. Here. It is, isn't it? The little clip where it's on set under the ice. So is that a twenty or a thirty? It's a twenty. It's a twenty. A twenty, yeah. From the flak violin. You really don't see that a lot. Nineteen forty-three. Never see these are bodice armor suits anywhere. Well, a lot of people took them as souvenirs, like in medieval. Quatre cent mètres. Ils pensaient qu'ils étaient en sécurité, mais pas contre le bal model cans. Pas pour eux. My my bell will go through that at four hundred meters. Pretty sure my nine millimeter will go through that. But this is all my piece. There's actually a heat. Holy shit. There's an eagle stamp on the coal from Hitler's bunker. Here. I that's <laughs> Yeah the Holy oh, shit, there is a fucking eagle stamp on this thing. That is absolutely a dumbest thing I've ever heard. People pay you to come here and have a, a 
on attend, on attend. Sur les côtés, ils avaient mis des, des poutres de cheval de fer. À l'armée allemande. So this, so they signed in an, in a map room back in the day. Yeah, in Arras. Uh, These come from the room where the surrender was signed. These maps. They did. The yes. association shape de Gaudet pour faire. Yeah, that's what I saw. Shape map room. This is the connection between the buildings. You really can't tell. What I think they did is this is also a reinforced building, but they built they wooden they built it around the wooden structure. <laughs> they literally left the wooden structure, the wooden barracks inside, and they constructed this on the outside. That's really something else. They did. So this is the bar. <laughs> Maybe we should buy something to share. Lollipop to control, for controlling the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, vous espérez. Le chien compte en arrière, ça compte. Le chien compte en arrière, ça compte. Le chien compte Down here from the complex is a railway tunnel that Hitler's train would have pulled into. I can't show you because it is still an active rail tunnel. But there were huge armored doors on either side. They were removed for safety. Remaining bunker of fortified building there. Now, So this was the bunker they suggest that Hitler would have stayed in had he remained here. There was a fire inside, there's asbestos. I don't know where the asbestos came from because most of these bunkers, they don't have any asbestos. Having been on fire, I'll buy that. Hitler's bunker, I'm not so sure. This is not just, it's an above ground shelter that is just not reinforced enough. He would have been safer. Wait a minute, what's that up there? What is that up there? Chimney attached? Smaller shutters, another chimney, and there's a bunker up here. What is that? This was the bunker complex that was built and designed for Hitler for when he was supposed to be here and working here. Possibly some of the meetings took place on that 16th June when he was here in this bunker. That is unclear. It was sparsely decorated from the one photo we have existing from this site. Again, you have a hugely reinforced central bunker for Hitler, surrounded by a smaller complex of offices that is lesser reinforced. Unfortunately, due to vandals setting the building on fire, it is full of asbestos and therefore impossible to enter. It's been sealed up completely. I hope one day it will be possible to clean this up and renovate it, as it will be interesting to see the very setup, including Hitler's bunker. And the front is slightly more elaborate than the others. But it's interesting to note, the huge bunker behind it is one of the few of Hitler's bunkers that is actually intact and in existence today. So I hope we get to see this along with the other 850 buildings we still have to see. The special bunker for Hitler's personal use was designed and built under the name Führerbunker designated 001. The columns, three double doors, it also looked grander than the other bunkers. 
The actual reinforced bunker lay behind with a deep foundation, just like the office bunkers where one hard bunker was surrounded by weaker office building structures. However, Hitler was only here once, on June 16, 1944, where he met his very old generals and field marshals to discuss the Allied invasion of Normandy. The large windows here in the front, yes. And there's a much bigger bunker here. Behind it is a much bigger bunker, and here is a staircase leading down. I'm assuming doors closed was only one way of finding out. Look at the sloping sides of this. This is interesting. This is an uh, interesting looking bunker. There's a big casino was above us. There's a chute. I think this is the cold bunker. This building I'm looking at the foundation for seems a lot more secure and larger than the others. Let's see if we can get up and find out what that is. This is where the coal bunker entrance was. This is the foundation we saw below leading up to this up here. This is really, uh, this is the interesting one. That's the big bunker, and down here is the coal chute, or it was. And you have these huge shutters. But what is in this, this big building? And you see how big this superstructures. This looks like a very large hawk bunker, and teeth bunker as well, with a kasan built around it. There were several entrances, this one along with the rail. You first have the guardhouse, the offices and 
housing for the SS Guard Battalion, and you have a large guest bunker as well. These buildings we know, we see. Storage facilities, offices, what have you. Nothing, nothing we wouldn't expect. So this is muddy and messy. Well, let's go see. Show the basement of one of these. Because the ones at Wolf's Lair, for the most part, were destroyed quite well. Not just generator. Yeah, water tanks, generators. Down here. Mud. Lots and lots of mud. A little staircase down here too. Could be to diesel tank fuel. This could have been a fuel station for the vehicles. There's a motor pool further up, but it looks like it was rebuilt since the war. Because those buildings now look like they were built by the French. And here next to the guard battalion bunker, you have, of course, a motor pool that is still remnants of how it was. And you have a huge reinforced bunker for the guests. However, the tower on top of it was constructed by NATO troops for training and repelling. So obviously these are the garages. There was army and SS here. So who was where is hard to say. Obviously, this is the motor pool with a repair workshop. A little repair ditch. And I remember being stationed on a former German caserna as well, and I can say this motor pool setup has not changed in 80 years. You can discern if it's NATO or World War II. The French resistance told the Allies about this because they thought it might have something to do with the V1 launch uh, system. However, the Allies, when they started flying over it, they couldn't find it because it was so well camouflaged. First, this repelling tower left us a little baffled. Initially, it does look like part of the original construction, which, of course, it was not. It is just simply an addition to a reinforced bunker that was used for guests staying at the facility. And it was a huge facility with a lot of staff and a lot of amenities. As the Americans found out, as they conquered the area and took it over, they found two trains loaded with foods they had not seen for a very long time including tinned cherries. It's a very large design. I'm guessing this is where the motor, the generator, power, this would be the power station. I'm imagining this is the power station. Don't know what else it would be. be quite honest. However, this is closed off. And it's the other side of a tunnel, which I'm probably just going to go in from the other side, but here we go. And look at the rings to hold the uh, camouflage netting. Yes. I can't wait to see the Allied air footage from here because... Oh. I, I mean, they, they, they camouflaged Wolf's Nair to the point where you couldn't see anything. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I've never seen that anywhere else before and I'm not really buying that it worked. Yeah, but you'd have to have you'd have to have us, but you don't have a 90 degree angle. So we have come to the joint conclusion that this was at best an elevation in staircases to shield from direct gunfire. The auxiliary building. Wow. 
押して。Alright, they keep them in blocks to keep them safe. I, I get that, but it's not helping me. <laughs> This is definitely not, not getting in here. original windows closed with the shutters this was from the tile judging a bathroom now this was used by NATO after the war there was a bat my favorite bat friend but I wanted to go through these to give you an idea what they look like and this is what these Buildings look like they were very functional. Utilitarian offices, not 100% reinforced. They were cement, there was steel wheel bar in there. But that's the other end. These were definitely used after the war by the Allies, by NATO, you can tell. By the fixtures, the window, and the uh, lights. But just to give you an idea what they look like. You see the steel beams, you see the wood, there's some red brick in there. Of course the windows are behind the shutters. I mean granted it will take some time to to restore these, but still. Things doable. A lot of wood on the roof. I'm actually surprised I couldn't. I would expect to have seen a clean steel rebar, but I would have expected to see the cement straight through. Now, since I came through the window, I'm just wondering if the door is actually open. It's not. But anyway, these are what these utilitarian buildings look like inside. Not that reinforced, but all part of the accommodation for the soldiers and officers at this Führhaupt Hotel. Um, they're, very, they're very thin. They look like they're big, uh, big, big bricks and then patched up with red brick. All right, well, this is interesting. So, Coming down from all these bunkers, here we get a little plane, a little square, with a lot more. There's a lot of pedal plots here. Some of this was built and used by NATO, like this you can see from the paint scheme. But, well, it was built in the time of the war. And then later on, somewhat was reused and refurbished by others. But down here, it's interesting because the first building you come to is the rail station where the train will be and then further down from here is the train tunnel. Down 
here's the rail, that's the building by the rail station. And that was built for, well, I mean, it was built for, for Hitler and his entourage. Well, like I said, when he actually did come here, he used the, the car. The train would just take up too much attention from whatever Air Force happened to find it. You could turn this into such an enormous museum. Outdoor museum. Right there's the rail. Oh, I, I have, I have such a flashback seeing this. I, I have such a such a deja vu. I have such a feeling of deja vu seeing the rails here, next to this building. Thinking about the Wolfslayer uh, and all the support buildings that would be near it. But here the rail station, um, and then you say, have the rails here. It's just, it's interesting when you study military history and especially the last three German wars, it was all about rail. So whenever you see a rail line, you just think, oh, German way of war. <laughs> it's, it, it's almost, uh, well, it is, it's not almost, it is that they planned the use of railroads from the Franco-Prussian War and onwards. And if you don't look very carefully where you're going, you'll find out that there's a big arse bunker right here with close support. Roger, you gotta come see this! And now all of a sudden everything changed. This is a Regelbauten, built in 1942. Looks exactly like what it's supposed to. Close defensive, right next to the railroad, railroad building, in case of an air raid. This is where you would go, you could defend from here. And by the mere fact that there's defenses from here, means that there was, it was part of the defensive perimeter in some way, or at least last stand. Nobody did fight from here. When the Allies took this area, the Germans had long gone, and you, you suppose you can't blame them. You can blame them having locked the damn door. Uh, this rusted shut. But we know what this is. There's a close defensive position here, and the steel door here, the double doors. Number 743. So here's a bunker that can be salvaged. Absolutely. Here's a pit in front of it, which more for drainage than has to do with any kind of security. And I'm betting there's a Tobruk. I'm betting there's a Tobruk up there as well, and there is. And this one is closed. Oh, what a shame. But here it is. Here's the Tobruk. Here's the Tobruk turret. And the train is still running here today. The platform. It's interesting, there's actually a little indent here in the trees by the platform. Or where a platform would have been. Supplies would have come here earlier, but as the Allied Air Force became more and more active, I wonder how sound it would have been to have used this railroad in any way. Let's go through the building and see if there's any um, in the platform or the roof.
roof does not look reinforced at all. This is, well, there's a wooden interior structure. And then I think they clad it with stone. But I just want to see if there's a platform walking over the broken glass. And Toilet seats and everything else you have. There's an exit out to the platform. We're not seeing any. And there's a broken bathroom, but this is what people do, right? They break things. Here. Nope. Again, there's nothing there. This was again used after the war, as we can see by the fixtures. But, I just want to see if this was an actual rail platform. I think this was more of a crew type quarters. And the windows have been broken. Yeah, there's no. No exit towards the rail. So, this was not really a rail or a building. This building just happened to be next to the rail. It had nothing to do with the railroad. This wasn't a loading building, a loading building. That's why the platform, or it looks like there's a platform a little bit further up from here. But this is not it. The rail is right here. The rest of the complex is right up here. There's a wooden skeleton inside this, and I think they just clad it with stone to hold up a roof that's less than a meter. Hard to tell what's underneath. There's some space, but a reinforced uh, bunker, bomb proof. None of these were. None of this was bomb proof or reinforced or anything like that. So it's just a lot of work. But there's got to be more bunkers out in, out, out here in the forest. Lots of brooks. Lots of air raid shelters. They just would have to have been. It's an interesting area because there was it's an interesting area because there's a lot of activity took place here during the war and then after as well, both for training. Well, the NATO headquarters were for a while. The school training, nurses, truck drivers. I would imagine this would be the dining hall. Again, not particularly well reinforced. Could be an auditorium of sorts. I'm not seeing what I would usually see associated with a kitchen, at least not from the direction I came. I'll take a look through this side. Exactly what I expected to see. I guess we could say this might be an officer's mess, but only if there's a kitchen in here. Not like there is. Well, you know what? Look at those supports. It probably was. I'll stand here. Okay, that's somewhat unexpected. 
there's a lot of large basement underneath this building, which looks like stores. I wonder if we could find any of the mnemonic tubes that carry messages. Don't see why we would if this is the dining hall I think this is. And I do think that it is a dining hall. It would not be impossible to find somebody who's been alive today who was stationed here and would know this. Oh, my favorite last name. Danger Verboten. I don't know what I'm going to name my kids. Here are Tino's kids. Danger and Verboten. So you'll get why that's sort of funny. <laughs> That was an interesting, uh, well, you know, I did say there was a downstairs, didn't I? Oh, well, since you throw a staircase at me, I mean, you're forcing me to go into the dark underground, aren't you? Although, I just want to see if there's any of the communication tubes. So this would be... Food store? Yes, these are freezers. Well, not anymore, but they were. All right. So there would have been no reason whatsoever to have communication through this. If you need to pull somebody out of the dining hall, you could do that with a runner. All right, so. Cold shoot. It's not a terrible condition, considering how old this building is. It's interesting to see a little parade ground surrounded by these reinforced buildings. Probably there was some communication going on in there during the time of NATO. This was really a mini barracks caserna for soldiers to do what they would usually do just in the field, not in the beautiful old German barrack buildings like you'd see most European militaries have these old, elaborate, gorgeous buildings where they have their military academies. This was closer to a fast, quickly built combat caserna, I guess, would be the way of describing it. I really do enjoy this little Appellplatz, this small caserna here in the middle of the complex. It sort of does remind me of any of the other installations we've seen, but it's still in existence, and it's survived, which is a wonderful thing. Again, just another very tight building. And there's been a fire in here. Clearly.
partially built in brick brick out here to the parade ground. Little offices maybe. Hmm. Again, wooden roof. Construction up here. So not reinforced. And this door is facing the railroad. Oh, that, I mean, look at the condition it's in. I know, the, all these are, these are in great shape. The real stuff they built for the Second World War lasted. Now, let's see if anybody was kind enough to not lock the damn door. Ah, I see doors. I mean, yeah, this, this is what, I don't know why they would lock these. Yeah. But yeah, this is a uh, two-room two shelter, Eichelbauten. And whatever's on this side is possibly the same. I'm starting to see where all these shelters and bunkers could come from. And then there's a staircase up. Hmm. Curious about the staircase. You can easily hide an enormous amount of stuff up here. I know I'm walking under a shelter. There's no doubt I'm on top of a shelter. I just don't know where the entrance is. It could be opposite the shelters down here. This is a relatively modern building. So not really interesting. But yeah, this is new. So I mean, there's shelters, bunkers, things hiding up here, everywhere. And it's just about cataloging them, lo uh, locating where they all would be. Look at this. This is the trench to the lake about now, it's just in, but the doors are closed. So that goes into here. And there's a cement wall leading, well, okay, there's a very large tree on top of it, so it could just be I later did find out I was correct. There was a huge bunker sitting on top of this site to my left. But it is no longer here today, as some of the bunkers have been destroyed, sadly, or have been covered up. Here's yet another one of the standard bunkers surrounded by a small office complex. Part of this was used after the war, but it's very interesting because the door is open. And I do like that they put up a little tarp over the roof to keep the rain out. It will live a little bit longer. Renovating this one, well, you judge for yourself. Alright. Now we're just crossing all our appendages that this is open. You can turn the engine off, this is open. Yes. I get it, it's been used since the war by the Allies. But come on, this is a huge bunker. Here's some of the underground. See how that rebar comes down to the side there? The tubes are here. Full of these little rooms. Again, yes, it's been used by NATO, but the building is the same. It's the bones of the old headquarter building for Hitler. And this is large, and it's just sitting out here being fairly forgotten. Now somewhere inside too, a lot 
tubes and pipes here. And look at all this. Look at the foundation, though. So this foundation is very substantial. It's very hard for me to not think that sloping side. But that, that side is sloping. And then here is the reinforced bit. So, at some point in time, I should be able to make it right and get into, get in under the four meter thick roof. And see here for a minute. Here. Okay, so the water tank, disregard that. Look at that side. This is a really thick bunker that came first, and then it had this little office building built onto it. I think this is where you would have had uh, generators and platforms, could have been a kitchen. So it looks to me as if <laughs> so this wall on the right leads in here, which would be the reinforced part. Yeah, identical to the other one. With the stairs leading up for the blast. I'm still not sold on this blast protection. I'm really not. It will just travel the blast over this hump and then back in. Here's more, none of the pneumatic pipes. This is, and here it is. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. And uh, once again, I know it's been used since. That's the original color of this bunker. There's a lot more I want to see. So inside to the right is the reinforced area. These are just offices and, surprise, bathrooms and the original paint. And let's go on the part that's reinforced to see if there's anything remaining in there. So there must have been quite a few of these buildings and we knew there were. All right. Take a nice jump off this. Seems like it looks like a big one. Sturdy. So, a little fire in here as well. And here's the secure door. Three double doors. Firing precision, close defense. So the other one's open. Well, the thing is, there was original wooden floor, and here it was, the original wooden floor that has now disintegrated from fire. Well, it's going to be fun to navigate this, isn't it? Well, we'll take a little trip. Wow, it really looks like they have the original backing. Oh, oh this is new. But, wow, some bathroom right there at the end. And a door frame here. This is where the floor would have been. have to torch the damn floor before I showed up. I'm wondering what's peeling down that thing. It's kind of still in there. Yeah, 
they just completely wore it through. Wooden doors. It's very hard to tell if this was, if there was any, what modifications might have been done here. But I'm not falling through the metal that's coming down there. I mean, I will one day. But right now, well, there's the original light switch. But this roof with this corrugated metal here looks like it could have been put in place later as part of a ventilation system. Or it was the original ventilation system. It's really hard to say. But how cool is this? How cool is this? Here, all these large buildings you can see. So there's a staircase that should then lead me out side. <laughs> yeah, there's another staircase like a, the blast, and here is the tubes that would carry the communication from inside the secured area. talking about was coming down. This looks, wow, it does look like it really fit. It really does look original ventilation. This is original. See the old cables there? I don't think anybody used this. And the original yellow color. I'm standing very still because I'm standing on wood that I know is rotten. So, <laughs> I, I just stepped onto it. I feel like I stepped onto a minefield. So we'll just go a little further and see what happens. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at this. This just looks, again, wooden floor. <laughs> I just want to walk through and just look at all this. But... Roger's outside, he's not gonna carry me in, drag me out of this hole. All right, we'll make a uh, gazelle white jump onto the cement. Yes, we did, that was very graceful. This. Why are more people not visiting this place? They just, well, okay, because they don't know. But they should know. This is theoretically one of the most intact of Hitler's field headquarters there were. Don't tell me there's another one. There is another one. Okay. So this just continues on into more Roger 4. Or somebody put a uh, little book out here for me. Shit. Look at this. All right, it takes a little work and a little paint. Okay, I get it. <laughs> but this all looks original. of those tubes. Right for overpressure. One door and the other. So there's three ways in 
to, oh, what the hell shall we call the top, just for the sake of turn lingo. So then there is the first secure facility. And here is the stairs with a little bounce again. But this is the way into the secure facility and we are Literally standing at an open. My initial thoughts as I was looking at this complex and these buildings was that these were similar to what I saw at Wolfschanze in Poland. However, upon inspection and looking at the maps and drawings, they really are not. In Poland, the full building was all reinforced and strengthened throughout. Here you have a reinforced bunker that is surrounded by office buildings that is less reinforced. Now we're above the last bunker. I don't know what I'm looking at. Drainage. And I'm just going to take you with me on the journey through whatever this is. Because it's fun and I do figure it out at the end. Water drainage. This could be the water tank. Well, there's a Regelbauten. With, huh. Interesting. This is the entrance of the Tobruk that runs into the tunnel. What? This is the Tobruk entrance and this is this tiny crawl pipe. Are you saying they had a guy with gear and his MG crawl through that to get to there. Okay, I'm confused. This is what it is, and up here you have the little pigtail sticking out for the camouflage netting. That's still there. The Tabrook is there. Let's take a look down the stairs. I'm Pretty conflicted as to think about what I'm looking at. Oh, doors open. Hello. All right. Look at the piping behind there. That's not how the closest defensive position looks. You don't have that behind there. You'd be able to stand right behind this and fire through the door. And that's the other entrance. Is this? This is a ginormous power cable. Oder? 
clamp for a power cable. Another tunnel. What on earth is this? So, well, somebody built something up inside this here thing. And there's the ladder. Excuse me, there's a ladder. That is cemented into the wall. What? The hell is this? What is this all about? So you have the ladder cemented in. You had the woods, or the spot for where the wood would be. Have a beam sticking through there. I can't put a time on. Well, wait a minute, but there's also a steel reinforcing bar there and there. So that would be period. This cable just freaks me out. And in here, is the other side of the close defensive position. So somebody built a box around it. This is the weird thing I'm saying. This. If I didn't know any better, and I don't, I'll think this is a training scenario. I just... All these small pipes. It looks like... This was not part of the original vehicle button. This is new. Wow. Um, but these were dolls in the original wall. Pretty sloppy work. Don't think this was wartime. But in here is then is this where oh this is room in there. And there's a room with another little window in there. That leads to a dead end because there's nothing there inside. This is the hmm, the weirdest room I've seen. I don't even know what they did with this post-war to make this make sense. Seven seven nine. All right, let's see what happened in seven seven nine. to me. I think this must have been a training course. It must have been. You look at how this snakes it way up. These little pipes. Huh. 
interesting. Only thing I think about is they rebuilt this to a training obstacle type course where a soldier would crawl through this all the way through the Regelbauten in and out of the pipes and up in the Tobruk and through the cement pipes they stuck in there. Must have been a training exercise. Never seen that before. Great use, interesting initiative. This is the enormous communication bunker, 108 meters long, probably the longest building of its kind, with over 600 telephone lines, including a direct line to Berlin, with its own power source, central heating, running water, sewage systems. Communication bunker could be self-sufficient if it needed to, if the headquarters was attacked. This is impressive, overseen by a little Regelbauten up on the hill. And there's so much more that we won't be able to see today, but with 500 bunkers still here, it'll take a while to go back and go through. And if there's 75 of the big ones, and there's hundreds of these, then there's also hundreds of security bunkers, and I mean, it, it's never, it never stops. A huge communication bunker which measures 180 meters long. It's possibly the longest building of its kind ever. It had over 600 telephone lines, including a direct line to Berlin. With its own power source, central heating, running water and sewer systems, the communication bunker could be self-sufficient, if active while the headquarters was attacked. And don't despair, I didn't show it all to you. We're coming back. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebner's nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.